to Lee Judges TV. We are live. Hello, welcome to Lee Judges TV. We are live. Something different today in the studio. Um, doing a live stream. We're going to reflect on what's gone on over the weekend and also in the last couple of games where we are currently bottom of the league. Arsenal Football Club are currently bottom of the league. With me today, I have the wonderful Dan Potts. How are you, Dan? All right? Yeah, I'm all right, thanks, mate. Yeah, it's uh, sounded a bit different. Something different, I'm yeah. I'm happy to be here, Yeah, mate. we've been here since half nine, you know what I mean? <laughs> Say like, but uh, it's taken us a lot of time, the technical stuff and all that, but we are live. Also got uh, Mr. Kevin Campbell with us, who, of course, fresh from the Caribou Cup draw. Well done for that, Kevin. Like, uh, give us a good draw. Well, well, I had to do something. <laughs> I had to do something. <laughs> well, um, yeah, so, um, listen, um, we've had a few days to reflect on what's gone on. Um, obviously, like the anger of what happened and uh, the emotions of the game, I think was would be fair to say, have now dwindled a little bit, and the reality of it has settled in and all that. So, let's get on with it and let's talk about um, why mm. we are bottom of the league. And um, first of all, uh, Dan, what's your why, why do you think that we are in this position at the moment? Well, the thing is, Lee, you can't really put one specific problem at the moment. 100% fault blame. The way I see it is we have an owner who does not care. He allows the club to spend money. He allows the club to get on with it, basically, in my opinion. But doesn't really have any care. It's like a neglect, in my opinion, from Stan Kroenke. He's given the reins over to his son, who needs to take some of the blame. Some of the stuff that he does is very questionable in terms of PR. He's told us all to be excited before. He's told us all that he's got no, in, no in, interest in, in selling the club because he's totally committed to it, but he doesn't really show it. I think we have novices on our board, like Edu, like v which then leads further down to the novice in the manager. So how much blame we put at the moment is very difficult to kind of say one deserves more blame than the other. If I had to say one, I would give it more to the Cronkies because they're the ones who are responsible for the whole of what's happening at this football club. But you can't put the blame on the Cronkies for what happened at the weekend. And to be fair, the previous two games either. Because although that we've seen that the money potentially hasn't been spent as much as we'd like it, money has been spent. But in my opinion, it hasn't embolstered this mm. side. And I think it's showing that now. The other thing that I think is frustrating every week at the moment, Lee, is this manager. I don't understand the team selections. I don't understand the tactics. I don't understand some of the substitutions. And I really can't see what style of play we're trying to move forward with or progress with. We've had 18 months now and I'm still seeing players that I thought were going to be leaving starting games. Mm. I saw Bellerin and, and Willian playing in, in pre-season. I haven't seen them since. What were they doing in pre-season? Why did we not try and get some of the youngsters through to give them some time? He doesn't seem to want to go down that route. So he's playing players that now seem to want to be leaving. I thought Kalasanac was terminating his contract or going back to Turkey. Straight in the team. Pablo Marie out. Holden and Chambers have been playing since Arsene Wenger days. Straight into the side. No change. Granite Chaka. Everyone's surprised at what happened to him. Still in the side. So this is a, a team that is clearly not good enough on paper and it's also not being coached to progress. So I think the reason we're bottom of the table is top to bottom the club's in a mess. But if you look at the tactics and the understanding of where we're trying to go as a club, we're all confused. I don't think there's any clear understanding of the pathway of Arsenal Football Club moving forward. And it's unrecognisable, mate, at the moment. So those are a few things that I'm confused about. My question, Mark, is how long does this manager have? Because I can't watch this for the rest of the season, mate. Well, that was a great show. Wrapped up well with <laughs> Dan, like, you know. So, uh, yeah. Kev, uh, on, it's a great point that Dan really, made. Really, really good. Really good point. Really yeah. good. Um, in all my time, I've never seen Arsenal in the bottom three, or bottom, mm. after three games. What, what, what has happened? Why, why are we bottom of the league? What, what? I know we've had difficult games, but like, I look at it and... Uh, uh, Chelsea, for instance, have had uh, Liverpool and, and Arsenal away from home, mm -hmm. and um, and look good. And look good. Look good. I actually watched Wolves yesterday, um, and they've lost all three games. But they've been. You could, if you was a Wolves fan, you would they've be been like, competitive. Uh, they? Yeah, they've been competitive. So what? Why? Why are Arsenal in this mix? Why are we not? You know, like, like in the last two games. Let's be honest. 
or even three, if you be on a game with Brentford as well. Yeah. We've not competed in any three of those games. Yeah, we've not been competitive. I, I, the, the truth of the matter is, Lee, I have to take it back. Dan touched on a really good point. Money has been spent on recruitment. But if we're honest, 10 years, just over 10 years, we've been slowly on the decline. And at times we've stood still. And if you stand still in the Premier League, other teams are going to bypass you. And here's, here is the big problem for us. We are Arsenal. We're the Arsenal. And we've had success. We've, we've had the teams that have blown everyone away. Now we haven't got that. We don't have competitive players. We don't have that will to win within the team. And from the hierarchy upstairs, remember, the Cronkies have been there for a long time now. It's not, it's not their first dance. They've been there. They, as far as I'm concerned, that wanting to be the best is not the be-all and end-all of Arsenal anymore. We don't want to be the best. Why? You always tell that in the recruitment. The mm. recruitment tells you whether you're an also ran mm. or you want to be the best. We don't want to be the best. So we've skated around for, oh, we qualify for Champions League and never do anything. And then the back end of Arsene Wenger, he saw the team starting to dwindle away and it get more difficult to get in the top four. And in the end, we don't get in the top four. Mm. And, and then we change managers twice and we don't get the experienced manager in that the club mm. need. Mm. So it's not Arteta's fault that they went for him. But the problem is, Legacy, the legacy is 10 years we've been not wanting to be the best. Mm. And now the chickens have come home to roost because the players that are playing have never been good enough over the years. And it's reflecting and they will get Arteta the sack. He will get the sack because that game at Manchester City is the biggest snapshot of who we are right now. And that ain't Arsenal. Yeah. And, and do you know what? Uh, what, what I'm, I'm, it's not about, if, you know, obviously supporting the Arsenal and everything like that. But And it's not always... I don't actually support Arsenal because I think they're going to win the league or they're going to win... Because if, if, I, if I would have chose Arsenal for that when I was a kid, mm. I would have gone, gone and supported Liverpool or something yeah. like that. It's not, so it's not about that. But I want to be excited. I want to be... Um, have, have hope. And I, I look at the transfer window, the, even this... this 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 season, this this transfer window, I see Liverpool fans getting excited because they're getting their players back. Chelsea buying by Lukaku, I see that their fans get. Man United fans now are all excited about what's going on. Jack Grey, we've got an owner that said, let's be excited, and there's nothing really exciting about Arsenal at the moment. What is exciting about Arsenal at the moment? There isn't nothing to, that's going to get you excited. Can we? Can we do something in the transfer window? Is that going to be something that's going to help? What, what, what can we do to get us fans back involved? There's a lot of fans at this moment in time, and I'm going to put myself down as one one to include, that have lost a bit of enthusiasm 100%. for the club. And it's nothing to do, look guys, it's nothing to do about winning. What The reason I've lost enthusiasm is because I've lost hope. Mm. And I think as a fan, I've always had hope, mm. you know what I mean? Going back into the darkest days, there was always something coming along, like a, a signing of, of, of something. Like I, I, I look back at the doldrums that we've had. Like in my era, was in the in the eighties. Charlie Nicholas was signed, um, and that gave us the excitement. Mm. We was out of Europe for the first time for a very, very long while. Dennis Burkamp was signed, mm. give us that little bit of excitement. I don't see that now. I don't mm. see no excitement, no hope, and I think that's why fans are dwindling and, and losing their enthusiasm. Yeah, you're right, mate. And I think that, you know, you can go one further when Ozil and Sanchez started to be attracted to the club at the time. They were huge players and mm. it got the, a lift, you know, it was exciting. And 
That's what we currently need. My problem with it, Lee, is I don't think there's going to be, at the moment, the attraction there to come to play for Arsenal at the moment. And, you know, I'd said only a few months ago that Thomas Party can still come to Arsenal, that Aubameyang wants to stay. These big players that are attracting clubs. Gabriel was offered to PSG and Man United and Napoli, but chose Arsenal because they love the club because we're still reputationally mm. massive. Yeah. But there is going to come a time, maybe not too far in the future, where they say, where's this club going then? Where's the direction of this club? And I do point the finger at the owners here. I didn't want this manager. I never did. They believed the recruitment um, was now done away from Raul, away from Sven, Sven Mislintat, away from Husfami. Now it's Edu. He's now getting told, you're under pressure. You're not good enough. So these players are all getting recruited and these staff are all getting recruited by one man who's at power at the top. And that's why my fingers are pointing towards Cronky Moore. I want this manager out. Everybody knows that. I've said it for 18 months because I just didn't think he was right. But actually, you've got to look at the bigger picture sometimes and think, OK, that's not well on the pitch. But at the, at the end of the day, who employed Mikel Arteta? We could have had Ancelotti. We could have had Allegri. We could have even had Jose Mourinho, although I didn't want him. We could have had a proven elite manager. Antonio Conte mm. is now out there. Thomas Tuchel was available. We stuck with this man. So why are we sticking with this man? Because I think the fans would all agree, well, most of them would now, that this process is not working out like they all hoped. Every Arsenal fan wanted Mikel Arteta to work mm -hmm. because they're Arsenal fans. But when is the time that you say, we need to change this now? And that's my biggest question mark, is how long is this going to go on for? Yeah, Dan, I think, I think he's... Uh, he's um... Look, we're, we're Arsenal fans. Of course we want it to work. But the fact of the matter is, the players are going to get in the sack. Mm. Whether we like it or not. Whether you're Arteta in, Arteta out, it doesn't matter. Because it's a results business. Mm. And when you don't win mat football matches, the knives come out. The knives come out for the manager. So, again, Emery, who is an experienced manager, he got the sack. Freddie took over for a bit, even in his short window. He had problems with the squad. Yeah. And now, Mikel Arteta, he won an FA Cup with them and we thought, wow, mm. he's doing something with them. But just like eggs is eggs, they revert to type. They can't do the basics right. And if you can't do the basics right, you're struggling. The, the least you expect is for the team to be competitive, compete, tackle, do your job, head it. We can't do the basics right. So... He's going he's gonna to get the sack, as far as I'm concerned. Mm. But which big-name manager is going to stick their reputation on what we've seen so this far? This is the question, Casey. This is the big question, because, you know, Antonio Conte's <coughs> out there. Do you think he'd come, Lee, on Conte? Oh, well, I do. I do think that um, uh, Conte would come, because everybody goes on about money. He went to Inter Milan when they was... They've never thrown uh, lots of money. The reason he left Inter Milan was because they took away his star strikers. Nothing to do with about that, but he, he built that up. He came to Chelsea when they was out in Europe. Mm. I know that he had the, the financial backing there, but I think he backs himself as a, as a top coach to, to, you know, what the situation you're put in. Now, look, listen, most managers are not going to get a dream job where, it, where it's all... So the reason you get a job is because the manager's something's been gone sacked. Wrong. Something's, something's gone, gone wrong. wrong. So yeah. you need mm. someone to come and repair it. So if you've got something about you, you, you want to do that. And... Um, I, I get, I get. There's a lot of blame on the Cronkies. I really do. But I don't, I don't blame the Cronkies for the performance against Manchester City. No. I, I have to say that, and this is what I want to go on to now. Team selection for that game. I, mm. I, 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 the dust has settled, and I was really angry and really annoyed about certain mm. things on on um, on Saturday. And me and Kevin were talking off air, and we've. All three were Arsene Wenger signers. Where was Pablo Mari? Mm. Right, that's, that's his signing. Like, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. Where is Saliba? Mm. You know what I mean? I'm, I'm fed up. It's, I'm going to say this now. I've used this in a, a, um, term a little bit like, if you're an electrician, I love this one, by the way. <laughs> if you're an electrician and you... The, what, the, you changing a plug is just the, the duty of, of an electrician. That's why you're called a electrician, because you can change a plug, because that's what you have to do. Now, as a centre-half, one of the f heading 
is like an electrician changing a plug. It should be that straightforward. We, we're getting done. And it's not just Chambers on this one. We've, we spoke about it. Jock mm. has done it. Sterling, he's never scored an header. I can't remember the last time he scored an header. And 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 coming up. Yeah. Yeah. And, 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 and yeah, he coming in and, and scoring. So not only are we getting bullied by big central defenders, we're getting done in the air by um by midgets. By midgets you know what I mean? So there's there's that little wrong, right? Like, you know, I look at what they're going to midfield, and I, I I accept what Kevin said earlier on that one midfield player is not going to change a, a, an outcome of thing. But I look at it and I have to look at it from the bigger picture. Our best player in the first two um, two games, Lukonga, I'm thinking, everybody mm-hmm. thinking, what a great run. I'm really looking forward to it playing like, you know. How does he feel? He's played really well in the first two games. Didn't play in midweek, so you think to yourself, well, I'm being rested for the for the game on um, Saturday and, and, and not playing. Mm. And then, you know, as a young player looking at it, I'm thinking, well, hold on a minute, like, you know, Partey's going to come back into the team. Um, this is before the sending off, by the way. And, you know, the continuing to, to go with Granite Xhaka in there. I look at it and I think to myself, well, even I, before that game, if you're going to have someone getting around the pitch, you're going to need someone with which we know that Granite hasn't got. Mm. With legs. Uh, we're going to come on to Granite. You know, they've got legs and all that like, going on there. And I'm not going to criticise the front three. Pepe was out. Um, uh, Ill, illness, yeah. So, so we have to look at that and go, right, that's OK, that's fair enough. But those, the, the, key, the key decisions for me now is that I'm watching central defenders that I've watched for three or four years, even under Arsene Wenger, continuing to keep making the same mistakes. I, I don't, we don't know what's gone on with Saliba. Kevin made a great point about that. We don't know the ins and outs of that, why he's gone. But I would rather see him playing and making mistakes now than seeing these, these players continuing making mistakes. Mari, why have you signed Mari if you're not going to play him? Mm. You know, things like that. And, uh, what, what we, you know, who do we blame for that performance against well, City? Well, I think the, listen, you blame the manager. You blame the manager and the players. You know, I look at the situation of of this team selection. I think Lacong has been the brightest spark, in my opinion, the first three yeah. few, the two games that I saw, yeah. and he's then dumped out the side to play a system where they're trying to force in now Smith Rowe and Odegaard together, which clearly didn't work. Um, We've all seen what Kalasanach is about and we've all seen what Holden and Chambers is about. You bring up, you know, the, the headers, Lee. <laughs> that was Holden against Sterling, Holden against Yotta, and now Chambers has, has stepped forward and he can no longer hit a ball. So as far as I'm concerned, they're, fight, they're players that have been in for five seasons that shouldn't be anywhere near the team. Now, we've got uh, Ben White out ill, we've got Gabriel out injured, so we're going to have injury problems, I get that. But we're playing players that I think have no future at the club and they're still here because we haven't been able to do enough in the previous windows and now this current window to go. improve the squad. And I think that with, with the Granite Chaka situation, that was a strange one. The £18 million to Roma didn't happen. Now he's going to be our captain for a lot of the season and he still can't sort out his discipline. And I know we're going to come on to that in a bit. Then I look at the front three. I didn't see any of them have a shot. I didn't see any of them looking like scoring. So I blame the manager, because I don't think the style of play is there. I don't think the creativity was there again. And I see bursts from players who are rate like Smith Rowe. I see little bits of magic from players like Saka at times. But when I look at it as a team, we're not playing as a team. We've got individuals out there that are trying to make it work. And you bring up great points about Saliba, Pablo Marie. They are the two players that I would suggest are upgrades on Rob Holding and Chambers. Whether you think they're good enough to play in the first team is another question. But they are better, in my opinion, on paper and technically and defensively than Holding and Chambers. And we're not seeing him in the team. Saliba's just got another man of the match performance, by the way, against Marseille. And he's been player of the season now for Nice. So why are we not allowed to see that happen well, in our centre-half? I just don't get it. it that, that, that is a great point, like, you know. And, and, but listen, this is how I said, Kev, come on to you here, like, you know. First five minutes of the game against City, I'm, I'm, on reflection, we started off really, really well. Then you ask us to do the first bit of defending, Lee, and we, and we Lee, fell. We're going to go for a quick break just to fix the audio. Okay, just no worries. Out. Just going for a quick break.
two, uh, one. Right, yeah, sorry about that. We've, we've hopefully sorted out the audio. So, yeah, so that first five minutes, Kev, we started off really well. First bit of defending we had to do, we didn't do it. And, and I think then from then on, it's game over. Lee, do you know, against Chelsea, we didn't start too bad either. Mm. Against City, we didn't start too bad. Looked okay. Our problem is, as soon as the opposition start getting a grip of the game, we capitulate. We can't defend. We, we can't do the basics. And I say this honestly, having, having played and having crossed that white line for the Arsenal, this isn't the Arsenal what I'm looking at. It's not the Arsenal. Because you know what? Even if you're having a nightmare, the one thing you know you have to do is compete. You've got to run, you've got to tackle, you've got to make challenges. And you've got to do what you're paid to do, is mm. the basics. Mm. If you're a defender, you head it, you mark, and you stop the opposition. If you're a midfielder, you try and create and you try and protect your back, your back boys. And if you're a striker or a forward, you try and create something at the other end. And all the facets of the team are not gelling. Of course, the buck stops with the manager. Dan's right, it does stop with the manager. But you know what? There's pride. As a footballer, you have pride. You're playing against the champions, Manchester City, at their place. You've got to roll your sleeves up and you've got to say, we've got to be more difficult than to beat than that. They, they just attacked. They didn't do anything special, as far as I'm concerned. No, they need to. just, just chucked <laughs> yeah. a ball in there, didn't they? They just put a ball in there. And we couldn't deal with it. So it's sad. It's sad to see. And I, I, I've watched Man City in the last three games. Uh, the last three games I've watched them. It was the, the Champions League final, the Charity Shield, and the game against Spurs. They never looked like scoring from across. Every time they crossed against us, they looked like scoring. Now, this is the thing, this is the problem I've got with Mikel Arteta, and probably like, you know, Emery before that, if you want to go in there. He's been in the job 20 months, right? And we do not, we still cannot defend. I look back at the olden days with, with, with Arsenal going to George Graham, like you know more about this kid than me. But first of all, he came in here and he made us hard to beat. The defensive shape was there, worked on it and all that like. And I don't care what anybody says, you know what I mean? Lee Dixon, Steve Bowles, they weren't um, names that were... Um, household Ver names, household they're not household names. Man. They weren't Veron Veron Verons or the top, top players and all that, like, but he moulded them in. Same as Winterburn. To, to Winterburn yeah. as well. Like, Winterburn was a very, was a up and coming left back. There was a lot of talk about him at the, at the time. It was a good signing. But he, 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 he obviously had Tony Adams in there, like, but you know, he moulded this team into a, 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 a difficult team to beat. Now, going to the Arsene Wenger way of thinking, Arsene, I think, neglected the, the defensive side. side of it. But concentrated on the attacking side. And my God, it was lovely to watch, and it was good. We was we was vulnerable at times. Yeah. I look at teams like Manchester United now, or even Manchester City. They're a little bit vulnerable at the back because they're concentrating on attacking all the time. So I get that, but we ain't doing either. Mm. And that that is my problem now. And 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 the the thing for me, which we go on to the players. Let's just, just talk a little bit about the players at the moment, like you know. I, I've played in front of like nowhere near you know more, like our away end. I was lucky if I haven't played in front of as much as them. Like do you know what I mean, three thousand. Like you know what I mean. I, you, that, I used to look at that like you know that's enough to roll your sleeves up and work hard. Do you know what I mean. The, the fans that have turned up for that, you know, and what they go through. And I don't think the players understand. Is it because they're pampered and all that so, so much there because they're going flying up there or going into trains and all that? Back in our day, Kev, we used to have coaches that go to the games mm -hmm. and all that. Like, so you'd, it wasn't as easy as... I don't think they understand what fans go through. Lee, uh, one thing I will say is, as a player, w when I played and, and before me, after me, and it was just the way you had that feeling... It was us against them. Mm. When you see the away fans, that little section were us on the pitch. We had to reflect the fans. And when you go up north, especially, it's roll your sleeves up time mm. because they, you know, we want to come out of here with something yeah. to make our fans feel brilliant. Mm. And 
yeah, we might not be playing great, but you know what? We'll dig in. That was the key. But we can't. We don't dig in because we can't defend. We can't do the basics. Manchester City are a wonderful side, but they don't have to be wonderful to turn us over. Mm. That's the problem. The problem is the mentality of the players, as far as I'm concerned. I'm hearing that they, the Arsenal are going to have meetings. Players are going to sit down and have a meeting. You can have as many meetings as you want. <laughs> yeah, I'll find it. You know, you can have as many meetings as you want. It's got to be in here and here. Mm. Because you've under- got to understand what it means. Will the Bamiang turn up to it on time? That's another question, isn't it? Like well, Bamiang, exactly. So. Well, look, as far as I'm concerned, I, I, at times I feel sorry for the front boys because... They're getting no service, Kev. Come on, let's be They're honest. getting no service. But, you know, the, the, the truth of the matter is, what gives you hope is when you can defend. When you can mm. defend at the back and you're keeping the opposition out, something might just drop for you. Yeah, yeah. Mm. We start okay and then you go a goal behind. All yeah. of a sudden, it's that, that's that's a great point. A great point you made there. Like that first five minutes as a forward, you feel like, oh, this is good. As soon as the deflation, it might, they must get deflated. Deflated, of course. That, like, you know, mm. of course to, to see that. And then what is it? Two attacks and then they score two goals. Yeah. It's like here we go again. Th- this is why this is why I do give the manager stick because we talk about the players here, and and it's right and and you're spot on, Kev. What you're saying in terms of mentality, it's so so important. But we've just said it, and you just said it, Lee, that George Graham was defensively sound and it was the old 1-0 to the Arsenal. Arsene Wenger, for the first 10 years, was beautiful football going forward. The last 10 years, the balance weren't quite rare at times. There's a lot more attacking and defensive. And with Emery, I'd probably say that we were quite similar in terms of mm. high intensity, off-the-ball pressure, but we probably concede a couple, but we might score three or four to win the game. I don't understand what it is with Arteta because I've seen us... People say defensively more sound. Well, we've conceded nine goals now in three games, but we're defensively more sound with this manager, apparently. It's a lot one nil losses. Last season, I think we went behind 17 times at the Emirates and never, ever come back from it. Mm. So Mm. where is the mentality of the players? And where's the telepathy between the management and the players? And what is the style of football for us fans to watch? And these are all questions no one can answer me. Do you know, do you know one of the things that, that bothers me about Arsenal, and, and, and we talk about mentality as players and all that, like, I, I saw it bring it up, the goalkeeping situation. You had a goalkeeper last year that played really, really well at Arsenal, mm-hmm. yeah, and um, was, was sold or left out for, for, a, for a goalkeeper to come back in the team. I, I feel some, there's, along with the lines, you have to play well, earn, earn your stripes and, and, earn, and keep the shirt. I think that changed a little bit with the modern football. But I then look at Lukonga, L- like playing really well, dropped. You know what I mean? And this brings me on to Granite Xhaka, like, you know. Now, one of the biggest things now is, is in Arteta is the backing of, 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 of Granite Xhaka. Now, whether you like him or not, there's there's a great bit like there's there's so many divides at Arsenal. And Granite Shaka it's does a, de- it's a debate, isn't it? it? Brings it in as a debate. Um, well, one one is, is the captain uh, and things like that. Also, let's let's let's, let's get onto the fact of the matter is he, he's made it publicly aware that he wanted to go to Roma. Mm. Let's let's be honest, he's done that. So if you're a player in the Arsenal side, all right, he wants to leave. All of a sudden, like, no, he signs a new contract. Oh, the next thing he's captain, right? And then he does what he does on, on, on Saturday. Me, personally, we talk about it here, like, I took the easy option out. Did he want to roll up his sleeves or he whatever? He bailed, mate. He bailed. Uh, right, so that's he what bailed. I... Well, Kev. Trust me, he bailed. Trust me, he I'm bailed out. Trust me, he bailed out. And here's the reason why I think... I, 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 I personally think he bailed. You know the situation the club's in. You know we're struggling. I understand midfield wanting to get stuck in, but the team cannot afford to go down to 10 men. And you're one of the most experienced players on that football pitch for for your team. The team need a break. And the break you give the team is you getting sent off. (laughs) That's a liability. That, to me, that's a, he's a liability to Arsenal. Well, this, this, the thing is, Casey, I, I honestly ha, I have been harsh on Granite Xhaka, and, and people know I have been. 
but he proves me right every time because he makes the same mistakes. And I can't forgive players for making the same mistakes. I think can forgive players for making mistakes, mm-hmm. but I don't make the same ones all the time. Yeah. And then three games in, boom, another mistake. We've, and everyone goes, oh, that's shocking. Did you see Chaka? Why are we surprised? He does this every season. He gets sent off by either a stupid decision, stupid tackle, or he gives a goal away by doing something stupid on the pitch. And this is why I can't forgive him. When this season started and the transfer window come open, where was our priority signing? Midfield. Next to Thomas Party. Midfield. Not him. Yeah, well, we've not now, we've seen him. And he's still here. The other thing, I, listen, so I'm... I don't blame Granit Xhaka for this because it's like, you know, if when I was a kid, like, you know what I mean, if I knew there was chocolates in the fridge, you know what I mean, like, I would go and get them. Like, you know what I mean? If my mum continued to let me to do that, I would continue to do it, like, until she smacked my hand and said, you ain't allowed to go in here no more. But, uh, but if, you, if, you, if, you, if you're not stopped by someone in authority, You'll carry on going to the fridge, or you'll carry on doing the same sort of mistakes. He can't help it, it himself. It seems to me, it, yeah, but Lee, but, but you're rewarding him, Kev, with the captaincy as well. Come it, on, it, yeah, but Lee, but hold on a minute. We're not talking about a kid going for chocolate here. We're talking about an experience. <laughs> I'll use that as an just a, not analogy. An analogy. I, I get that, but what we're talking about is an experienced international captain. Yeah. He didn't do that for... for uh, that's what Switzerland. I'm when he was playing for Switzerland, he, he was don't back do against that. the war against France, wasn't it? He, I he didn't, didn't see do him that. bailing out there. He Why is he bailing that. out the Arsenal? Yeah, because maybe the pressure's too much. Maybe the pressure's too much, Lee. Maybe because, you know what? He doesn't have the pieces who, who can do the job. Because whether we like it or not, We've seen we've seen Arsenal be able to defend in the past. The players, the players, fair enough. The managers are novice. The manager people want him out. I, I get that, and he probably will lose his job. But the players have to take some accountability. They have to take some accountability. And if you're an experienced player, you do not harm your team. You don't. You've got to enhance the team. You're the one who's supposed to be pulling people yeah, about. I agree. I agree. And and. He keeps making the same mistake. And, mm. and that's the first sign of madness. <laughs> when you keep making the same mistake. Does that, you know, say like, by the way, we've got over 2,000 people watching at the moment. Thanks so for joining. Thanks, thanks for joining and all that. Thank God you, Monday. Flattering, you know. If you want to subscribe, feel free. You know what I mean? I'm not asking you to. Hit the like button you know, as well. Hit the like button as well, like, you know. The, the, the thing is with, with Grant Xhaka, I, I, I look at him as a player and I think to myself, is he making the? He, he's not doing these mistakes deliberately, is he? I, I'm, I'm going to put it out. There. No, I don't. I don't he, I, no, he's, you're right, Lee. I don't think he, he, he means to. He do means it. to do it. It just shows. But he just not, doesn't. He just doesn't. So he's not really good enough. So we had the opportunity. So who do we blame here? We had the opportunity, and I'm not a I, I'm not a Granite Xhaka hater, by the way. Mm-hmm. I, I see some good things that he does. You know what I mean? Like, and, and I'll probably be sitting next to him at Norwich on, on the next game. So I've got to be very careful what I say here, like, but. To me, we had the opportunity to take the money and run and maybe get in a Basuma or somebody else and we haven't done. You know, um, was it Locatelli we was looking at? Like, yeah, Italian yeah. fella, like, well, why, why was we looking at Locatelli? And then all of a sudden... Neves. We, never, we're looking we've at all changed, sorts of... Yeah, now we've... We changed the, the approach and thought, oh, right, no, Granite wants to say now. We're here, Granite mm. wants to say. I, I, I feel that that was a mistake. Massive. Like, Massive. And I think with Mikel Arteta, he's begged him to stay when he was off to Hertha Berlin. He's begged him to stay uh, when he was off to Roma. So he clearly sees something in him that he wants to keep at this club. Now, that's fine for Mikel Arteta. I don't think it's the right decision. But if Mikel Arteta wants him, he's the manager. And for whatever reason, he sees that he is the best in the midfield at the time. That's worrying to me as a fan because I can see for the last five years that he's been here that we've not progressed. We've not kicked a, 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 the a football in the Champions League with Granit Xhaka on our mm. midfield. So I want to see someone upgraded. I'm fine if Granit Xhaka wants to come in like El Nenny does now. If that's what you want to do and you want him part of your squad, that's absolutely fine. Yeah. But he is not a first team player, in my opinion. And he's proven why that he, why he's not. And for a player to throw the armband on the floor, I don't know another club in the world that would pick the armband up, put it back on your arm. I really do not know that. And apart from this new Arsenal, because that wouldn't have happened back in the day, I can tell you that. In your day, that wouldn't have happened. Been it would have been a good boy. You, you've captioned Everton. You've captioned at Everton and all that. Like, you know, honour, if I'll be honest, to, mm. to captain a, a, a club and all that. Like. Big time. 
would you ever thought of throwing the armband down or anything like that? Now, come on, you've, you've been booed by the fans before and all Lee, that. Like. Lee, Lee, I've been, I've been booed. I've, I've, I've had all sorts done. But you, one thing you... To be a captain of a football club, of the stature of the Arsenal, you, you, people don't understand. I, I know, as a fan, fans will die to be have that captain's armband for one game, mm. let alone have a player throw it on the floor as if it's nothing. So from that moment, I didn't want Granite Jacker at football mm-hmm. club. I'm not a big Granite Jacker fan. He has some good traits, but I think his bad traits outweigh the good ones. But the moment he done that, get rid, as far as I was concerned. Our problem is at Arsenal, we couldn't attract what we wanted. Locatelli was always going to do Juventus. Always. Yeah. Neves, I would have been happy with Neves. Why didn't he come? I don't know. I I was always mad for Basuma. Yeah, yeah I am, yeah. Master Basuma still there. Mm. That deal still could get done. It's not going to happen. Do you know, as, as, like you, as you say, like you know, what, when the manager comes, because I, I was lucky enough to catch him, not at the level of of, of you, but it was an honour. I felt like you know, I felt um, a pride of it. Of course. And I, I, I didn't want to let anybody down. No. Like, do you know what I mean? We, we, I used to be about like hundred to two hundred fans that we had. Like, you know what I mean? But you wouldn't want to let. I wouldn't want to let that. I felt. That response. There's an obligation. There's an obligation, like, you know. Yeah. So when 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 Walt Smith came to you and said, I'm gonna make you captain of uh, Everton, what was that feeling like? It was incredible because Davy Weir was was the captain. And I said to Walt Smith, I said, but Davy Weir's captain. So I understand if you want me to be vice, I get that. But he says, No, it's with Davy's blessing. So that's how much the dressing room believed in me. Mm. So, so there's a responsibility. So, then, so straight away, there's, there's a, responsibility. a responsibility. Now it's not just about myself. It's about the group. And the group have to reflect the fans. That's mm. the key. The group have to reflect the fans. Now, if you're a captain and you're getting sent off, how are you? you you're, it's a bad look for the football club that the captain's getting sent off because the captain's supposed to be the one who keeps his mm. mind. He's supposed to be the one organising. He's supposed to be the one, you follow me. But he's getting sent off. This is this is so wrong. And I'm not saying he can't get sent off. But as Dan rightly said, it's the same mistake time and time again. It's difficult. And, I, and, I, and I've, got, I've got to bring up this point now. Look, I think when you was at Everton, the, or I know, the, the fans were 100% behind you, yeah. as, as we have when we've walked around the Goodison, yeah. they still are, which is a big thing. Roy Keane, for instance, uh, Man United captain, mm-hmm. at one stage felt that he could talk about and slag off the Man United fans about the prawn sandwiches and things like that because he had the respect of the fans. I don't think from day one that Granite Shacker had that. and I, So I always felt it was a mistake to give him the captaincy, if you know what I mean, because mm-hmm. like... I think he was always, uh, you know, there was a lot of fans at the time, and this is where I've, I'm sort of sticking up for Granite a little bit here, like, mm. you know, there was a lot of fans that didn't think he should be in the team, let alone be captain. Yeah. So there was always that, he didn't really have the backing of the fans. Mm. Uh, do you know what I'm saying? Like, So is it really his fault to be the, given that, cap- or, or, you know, should he, or could he have said, for instance, like you said, oh, D- David, we are... Was captain. Was captain. Could he have turned around to the manager at the time and said, look, they, these fans don't really like me? Well, don't forget there was five captains at the time. Yeah, exactly. and, and they chose him, so... No, but Lee, there's five captains. He must have something then. If there's five captains... He's respected. He's... I, think, I think Granite Xhaka is respected in the dressing room. But don't forget, he's an international captain. Mm. And he's yes, an experienced player. So getting that respect inside is one thing. But earning that captaincy the Arsenal Football Club because you always have to look back at the captains who you proceed. Yeah. You have to look back. You look at the Tottenham, you look at the Vieiras, you look at all these guys. Fes Fabregas done mm. it with, with, with pride and passion. He wouldn't throw the captain's armband down. Mm. Mm. So you, you do look back because it's a serious position to be in. You bring up a great point there, Kev, as well because one thing we forget is you look around the dressing room at the moment when you were like the invincible scene, even in Kev's era, 
if Vieira takes it off, he's giving it to Keown. If Keown's taking it off, he's giving it to Thierry Henry. If Henry's giving it off, he's giving it to Bergkamp. Even Ashley Cole. Even Colo Torre. Gilberto Silva. They could have had that old Sol Campbell. That, the list goes on. The, there was there was 11 or 12 in that side. Right? Look at this now. He takes it off, Chaka gives it to Aubameyang. Aubameyang's late for stuff. Aubameyang takes it off and he'll give it to, let's say, Kieran Tierney, right? Who everyone says is too young. Kieran Tierney, to me, is the person I believe you'd give it to because he's got mentality and what you just said, Lee, the fans love him, right? So you need to have both of that. You need to be good at what you do, but also you need to be respected by not just the dressing room, which I believe he is, but also by the fan base. And then you get your captain to lead by example, which is what I want to see. Mm. Even Mikel Arteta has come out and says, I want 25 Kieran Tierney's, mental-wise. Not, not ability, because he is good enough, but up there he's sorted. And that's what I want. I don't think we've got enough Kieran Tierney's mentality wise in our squad don't, at the don't moment. you think that's damning what are well, you? I, I think that's it, damning I, I think it is damning and I think like you know all from from my supporting Arsenal going up until these last few years there's always been captains at the club I, I look at going back into the 80s you had you know Pat Rice was, was a mm. tremendous leader of it all but you had David O'Leary at the club mm. level you know, Willie Young was a, a, a leader on the pitch, yeah. if, if you'd be honest. Like Sammy Nelson, mm -hmm. you go into Liam Brady could lead by example sort mm -hmm. of thing. Like, you know, I was, I've was i even been watching like the Olden, Olden games like on uh, 1974, by the way. That was the last time Arsenal bottom of the league, by the way, mm -hmm. um, in 1974. They had Alan Ball in the team, you know what I mean? Like, they had some decent players, yeah. you know. We always had good captains, I mm -hmm. think, at the time. If you go through to... to to, to Kevin's era as well, mm -hmm. you could give it to Nigel Winter, Burnley, Dixon, uh, Steve Bold, Tony Adams was a young captain, which I thought was a very strange thing at the time. But mm -hmm. when you look at it, it worked. It, it worked. Paul Davis. Paul Davis. You, know, you had Paul Mariner. Rocky. Uh, Rocky. Rocky mm -hmm. could well, probably like at that, at that time, Kev, in those, those 87, 86, so Rocky would have probably been a more of a, a candidate than Tony Adams, but yeah. I think that Tony probably got it because he was at the back or yeah. whatever. But, you know, you look at that sort, sort of side and, and you don't necessarily be a born leader. You can be grown, grown into it and all that. That Arsenal team grew into to, uh, to captains and, and all that. Yeah. And listen, uh, one player at the Arsenal, you would, I would have said, watching Arsenal, I would never think was, would have been a captain. Would have been Paul Merson, like you know what I mean. But he went on to captain Aston Villa and done it really, really well. So you even go back into that time. Ian Wright's captain uh, <laughs> at Arsenal. Kevin's captain Everton. All, all around Richardson. Yeah. You know what I mean, like all leaders of all their time. Paul Davis and things like that. Why, why the, we haven't got that now. But like one of the things I, I'm going to ask now is if you. It must, it must be fantastic to be loved by the, by the crowd. You, you know that you're going to go up. When you was at Everton, you knew that, you know, they, they had your full backing. I was talking to Charlie Nicholas the other day. He was having a little bit of a bad time. Full backing of the Arsenal mm -hmm. fans. How is Granite Xhaka going to win this fan base round? He's certainly not going to win it back by doing tackles like he did on, on Saturday. Mm -hmm. is, is, it, is it gone for him now, Kev? Or is it, can he still get, get it back? I know you said you wouldn't have him there now. Could he ever win it back for you or Dan? <sighs> I don't, I, I don't think he can now, if I'll be honest. I, I think the fan base wanted him out this summer, mm. if I'm honest with you. There are, there are still some, some people who, who would back Granite Xhaka. I think for, for, even for them now, that was the last straw at Manchester City. Mm. I just think Arsenal need to win. Arsenal have to be in win-now mode. Forget all this. People talk about processes and all. No, we've got to win. Arsenal Football Club, the Arsenal should be about winning. Mm. And we need the best opportunity to win. Now, if we're winning football matches, you go with it because you're winning. But always remember, when you're losing, the world is crashing. Mm. And when you do stuff like Granit Xhaka did and getting sent off, that's so. That's that's the biggest no-no. So can he can he turn it around? I don't think he can. I don't think Granit Xhaka has got the game to turn it around. No, I don't either. And let's not forget he had the best season in an Arsenal shirt probably in the site at the time that he's had in his second kind of half Arsenal of last career. season. Yeah. Second half of last season, he was consistently good, but the fans still wanted him out, Lee. So I think it's done for him now. I really do. Yeah, I'm, I'm with you on that. Like, now, let's try and flip it around now. Let's flip it around. Minus nine. Lost our first three games. Um, 
we, we're struggling at the moment. Now, how? What? What can we do now, going forward? What? What is it? Do we? Do we go in the transfer market in the next couple of days and, and go big, or is it now just we're going to have to go with what we got? I'm going to have to work it. What? What things now do we need to, to bring in a system? Or, let's let's talk about systems because um, people were saying change the system. We change the system. We lost five nil. So what? What are we going to do now to, move, to move? Please, it please, on? please let me come in on yeah, this come because on. systems are only as good as the players. You're only as good as the players who are in the system. People think a three four three because we played four three three against Chelsea. Oh, we need to play a three four three. It don't matter because if you can't do the basics right, you, if you can't defend. If you can't tackle, if you can't run, if you can't create and if you can't score goals, you're not going to win football matches. So, again, people like to put all these system things, forget systems, it's about players. Manager's going to live and die by his decisions anyway. But how do we take this thing forward? I think we, we quickly need to get our main players back in. This is no excuse, but our better players, our better defenders... If you spend your money on Ben White, we've got to get Ben White back in. Mm. Got to get Gabriel in. Got to fast track him back in. He played 45 minutes yeah. against Spurs the other day in a 2-1 win, which was good. Got to get him in quickly. So we've got that him and Tierney combination on the left-hand side. Ben White there. I think we've got to do business for a right back. Yeah, Got to. If we can bring a midfielder in, another one, go and get Basuma. Go mm. and get Basuma from Brighton. No messing about now. We need a box-to-box, all-action midfielder with Lokonga and Partey because we've seen if one of them are out, we ain't quite strong enough. Mm. You know, we're not strong enough. So we do need a midfielder. And what we've got to do is the mentality of the team's got to be better. They've got to be able to compete, Lee. This is, for me, this is the biggest thing. So whether the manager changes or not, I reckon they're going to get in the sack. So it, I could, uh, this is what I will tell you, and I'll tell you this for nothing. If Conti or Romancini come in, that dressing room is, is going to be on fire because they are going to be punching players. Mark my words. At Man City, Mancini was punch, he was going yeah, to punch yeah, players. Yeah. Conte, well, there'd be murders. Because mm. the basics, if you can't do the basics right, what can the manager work with? Mm. It's impossible. So that's the way it has to be. We have to get our better players back in that team. Get the mentality right. And we've got some big games coming up against so-called, so-called so lesser teams. teams. We'll put a poll up on the, on, on the channel to just say, like, you know, Arteta, should, should, what should happen with Arteta? At the moment, it's running at 74% saying that Arsenal fans are saying that out. it out. Like, you know. So that's how big it is now it's turned. Coming into this international break now, Dan, do Arsenal go with what Kevin said, like, you know, try and get the players back, or is it now looking at complete change, get a new manager in, or is it or, or do you think Arsenal are gonna stay with him? And if so, if they are gonna stay with him, we're gonna have to get some new players in because it, I'll tell you this now, if um anything happens to Partey now or he's not quite fit now, at, at this moment in time we've got Lukonga, but anything happens to them too. We are now got only El Nenny in there that can play in that 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 job because uh, Shaq is out for three games now. Mm. So are we? I I can't see us improving with our mid. I can't see us improving that much with our midfield unless we we go big in in the next day or so. Well, it's tomorrow, isn't it? It's tomorrow. The last day. Tomorrow's so we've got like, we've got to work today. Yeah. So <laughs> so like it's bank holiday. So the recruitment team we're having a day off today because it's uh, bank holiday. So we've only got one day, like you know. <laughs> So I'm sure they're having barbecues and whatever uh, this moment in time, like you know. So, uh, what what do you see as well, what can we do? We need to be realistic about the situation, Lee. So, we need new owners. That's not realistic at the moment, okay? Because they're not going anywhere. So, what else can we change? The players, because the window's still open. I agree with KC. A right back is a must. I still think Basuma would be an outstanding signing. And I do like the look of Husum Awa, but I'm not so sure that that will happen now that we've got Erdegaard and Smith Rowe both playing into the same side. But we do need some players to come in to improve the side because there's still some holes, in my opinion. Mm -hmm. But I look at the first 11 
when they're all fit. And I don't think it's a bad side, you know. So that's where my, my question marks are with the manager. I would rather see Antonio Conte come in now because if you're not going to have the new ownership, then you need a new direction. And a new direction on the pitch has got to be the management. And at the moment, I don't care what anyone says. I don't see systems getting any better with this manager, players getting any better with this manager, tactics or substitutions or whatever you want to call it, improving with Mikel Arteta because it hasn't done so in 20 months now. So for me, Antonio Conte would do exactly what Casey said. He'd come into that dressing room and demand only one thing, the best. And when I listened to the article that he did when he left Inter Milan, Mm. I loved it because Mm. it said, I don't come to teams where I think it's going to be glory. I come to teams where there's going to be a challenge and we will take that team to glory. He did it with Bari. He's done it with Juve. He's done it with Inter. He's done it with Chelsea. Let's hope that he looks at the challenge at Arsenal and says, do you know what? That's one hell of a challenge. We're out of Europe. <laughs> you yeah, say that again. We, we, We've got a team that I don't think is, is as bad as people are saying, but still needs some work. Let's look at what we can do there. So that's what I'll be doing, sacking the manager and getting Antonio Conte. And, and you say with Conte, people say about Conte not coming, like, you know, Juventus, well, I think we're in Division 2 yeah. when, when he took over him. So, uh, don't, you know, but he was an ex player as well, don't forget player, that. Yeah, but yeah. that. You know, he's been over in London and all that. Like, I, don't, I don't think we should dismiss it and say, oh, we're not going to get. We're gonna not gonna get country like you know. What I mean? I agree. Lee, Lee, the reason why all, all I say is, with these big managers, it's a matter of stake in their reputation, hmm. because they come with a big reputation. Conte's got a big reputation. Can I ask you a question? I know that you you've been very supportive of Mikel Arteta and, hmm. and, and whatever. If if you got wind of it today that Conte said yes, he wants to come, and he's prepared to come to Arsenal, would you would you fire the gun? Yeah. Lee, I've said this before, Mikel Arteta's going to lose his job. He is going to lose his job. He is going to lose his job. That's for sure. Because the results are not there. It's a results business. Yeah. And, and I understand, I back any Arsenal manager. Why? Because I love the football club. And yet it hasn't quite worked out how, how we would have liked. But I still want the team to do well. Whoever is manager, I will back them. I will back whoever is manager. The key to it is this. We need results. Mm. In a results business, we need results. And if it's not working with one, and it flips and it changes and Conte was to come in, listen, I'm all for it. So, if we're not going to get rid of... Say, like, I don't think the club will bite the bullet, by the way. I think that they're going to keep with Arteta. What, what, what do you think will... Turn it around for him. I, like, I know you're saying that he won't, but what has he got to do? So what I mean is like, well, Lee, here's, here's stopping the, and changing the team. He can't continue to keep doing that. He's got no, to believe. Yeah, it. but that, that's the the point that you just said is this. People think it's an excuse. It is not. We do not have a strong enough squad to take on some of these other teams without it being our best eleven. If it's our best eleven. I fancy us against most teams. But when it's not our best 11, we're relying on players who we know can't do the job. Mm. This is the problem. And yet, does it reflect bad on the manager? Of course it reflects bad on the manager. But if you've got bad players to choose from, we're bringing back Kolasinac into the team and Kolasinac is our best defender. (laughs) He shouldn't even be at the football club. So again... If Gabriel's there and Ben White's there and Tierney's there, I feel a lot. Mm. I feel a lot better with those guys at the back mm. than Chambers, Holding, and Kalasanac. So we need party back here. You know when we, we say parties this and that, but you know what? When he's in there, we're he's a be- different he's, team. He's better than what we've got. We're, we're we're a different team. So we need to upgrade it, but we need our best players on the football. Pitch. Right, we're coming to the, to the end of the live stream in a moment. Like, you know, I mean, one one thing that I, I, I need to ask. So we're going to say like, once we get our best players back in, that's that's good. That's the only thing that could say you are to how, how, how on a one to scale, one to ten scale, if Arsenal don't bring anybody in now to the end of the se- to the end of this transfer, do you think? What first question do you think they will? And if they don't, how disappointed are you going to be by that? 
Well, I think if we don't, if you know, I think we will bring players in because I think we have to. I think we have to get a right back looking at things as I am seeing it. And I think we have to look in the midfield uh, situation too. But when you say if they don't make any business, they're basically saying to us, we're happy with what we're seeing out there. Mm. So that to me is a huge disappointment. I mean, if you ask one to ten, no higher than a two, in my opinion, because it's a shambles at the moment. We're bottom of the league. The transfer window is still open. And like Kev says, we're seeing players like Kalasinac coming back into the side. Now, when you look at the first team, I honestly don't believe if you get a right back, I'm with Kev, Gabriel, Ben White, Kieran Tierney, Thomas Partey, Laconga, Smith Rowe, Erdegaard, Saka, Pepe, Aubameyang and Lacazette. Are they really at bottom of the league side? No. They're no, not. They're not. So, if Conte comes in, and let's say they say it's an if, because a lot of people say, no, he's no chance coming in. If he comes in, that team right there that I've just said will not be finishing eighth. It will definitely be competing, in my opinion, with the European places, and it may get us a domestic trophy. That's what I believe that manager is, how good he is. He's, He's up there to work with, hasn't 100%. He? He's up there with Simeone, Pep Klopp, in my opinion. That's how good this guy is. That's the only thing that can save us this season, because I think this manager's bang in trouble bang in trouble whatever happens even if players come back I've seen Thomas party all last season with Mikel Arteta I didn't see us really playing much better I see players like Erdegaard still there I see Granit Xhaka in midfield none of these things are changing the only thing from that first 11 Lee, that's changing from last season is Ben White so I'd see this eighth team that come eighth with Ben White I don't think they're going to be a massive improvement so we need some players but we also need a change in management mate and I would have I honestly would have sacked him after Villarreal that was his big chance to get us into prove people wrong, prove fans like me wrong that have been calling him out. I've just got us back into the Champions League by winning the Europa League. He didn't do that and then he finished eighth again. He should have been gone. But we've seen now him allowed to have three games. I don't want to see him have another 10 to 13 games where we get to Christmas, New Year and our season's done. And then our Conte is still about, let's go and get him in now and give him the January transfer window. We need to get him in now because he could actually save us and put us up that table. I think the problem for, for us is the ownership have had two opportunities to bring in an elite manager. Of course, the that's the manager. massive issue. And then, and then they've had two and they've never taken it. It's a worry. So, are they going to want to double down, triple down on Arteta and say, look, we've given him money and they've only given money, we're playing catch up. That's all we're doing. Yeah. yeah. We're just playing catch up. We're not, it's not as if we're improving the team so we're going to shift up the table. We're just Spending money to try and plug holes. That's yeah. all we're trying to do. And we've still got holes. Do you think uh, we'll, we'll make signings in this next day? Yeah, I, I do. I, I think the next 24 hours are key. We, we, we have to because we haven't got a strong enough squad. There you go. Guys, I, Philip, listen, I, I'm going to have to say this now. Over 3,000 people were, were watching that. Oh, yeah. Thanks a lot. Thank you, thank thanks. you guys. Much thank love. you guys for, for doing that. It's so much uh, appreciation on that. Like, you know. Um, because we've done so well on this, I think there might be a, 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 a live uh, a night in with the judge coming. You know, like Dave's trying to push that through. Like, so we'll see. But listen, guys, thanks for joining us. Listen, I hope you've had a lovely uh, bank holiday weekend and, and everything like that. Enjoy the rest of your day. And we'll be back very soon. So thanks for watching. Come on, Arsenal.